Welcome back to the Godot Rapport. Finally, after weeks of campaigning, Twitch has officially added a software and game development category to their website. But that's not all. After a huge push by the Godot community, Twitch has added a Godot engine tag. With these two major changes, it is now easier than ever to find a Godot related live stream. If you have never tried it, I highly recommend putting on a game development stream in the background while you work on your own projects. Something about being around other people who are also focusing on their work just helps me focus as well. And I might as well plug my own Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash codingkaiju. I mostly livestream game development. Give me a follow on there. This next story is not Godot specific, but affects any game developer who publishes their games to be sold. The Epic vs Apple lawsuit has finally come to a close. Long story short, Epic Games implemented their own payment system into the iOS version of Fortnite, which circumvents Apple's 30% cut from all in-app purchases. Since Epic violated the developer agreement that all the developers must sign, Apple removed Fortnite from the iOS App Store. Epic Games proceeded to sue Apple, alleging that Apple was a monopoly and was abusing its power over the market. This was a bench trial, meaning there was no jury. The lawyers only had to convince Judge Gonzalez Rogers of their positions. And Judge Gonzalez Rogers was not very happy with Epic's all guns blazing attitude and rejected the majority of their allegations. How can you argue that Apple is a monopoly when there is Android? Furthermore, Fortnite is in the video game space more so than the app space. So you also have to look at PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, and Steam on PC. The actual fallout of the case says that Epic must pay back all of the 30% cut that they circumvented up until that point. But the judge was also not an Apple fan. They described Apple's 30% cut as unfair and said it negatively impacts developers. So as a win for developers big and small, in 90 days, Apple must allow iOS apps to link to outside purchase mechanisms and sign up methods. Godot 4.0 is getting a new, high-quality, industry-standard Academy Color Encoding System Tone Mapper. The new ACES Tone Mapper interprets light more like a real-life camera would. Bright lights saturate a camera's sensor and become more white the brighter they are. Depending on the scene, the difference can be subtle, but this change should bring Godot one step closer to realistic graphics. Coming to the 3.4 update is support for contrast adaptive sharpening in GLES 3. This should help sharpen the image after it has been blurred by FXAA. It's recommended to use values between 0.5 and 1.0. One thing to note is that this change has not been merged into the 4.0 branch. And that's because for the 4.0 update, the devs are working on implementing AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution, otherwise known as FSR. FSR is AMD's response to NVIDIA's DLSS. Games are rendered at a lower resolution, and FSR will upscale the image to your monitor's native resolution. The goal of the technology is to have full resolution visuals at a fraction of the rendering cost. Godot already runs well on lower end hardware, but it's nice to see that gamers will be able to run Godot games even better than before. If you enjoy these videos, consider subscribing to the channel. Vice.com mentioned the Godot engine in an article on the game Cruelty Squad. Cruelty Squad is made by a developer named Calio. The game started out as Calio just playing around with the Godot engine, but soon blossomed into a full game. Gameplay wise, the game was inspired by Rainbow Six 3 Raven Shield. The game's striking visuals are very much intentional with one reviewer describing the game as, quote, a maximum effort shitpost wearing a puke-stained Rainbow Six t-shirt. Users Arconan has published a very interesting summary of their first time experience with the Godot engine. He's an experienced Unity dev and tried making a 3D game in the Godot engine for the Stop Waiting for Godot jam. And after using Godot, he shared his thoughts in this article. He said, The documentation was really good and up to date. He also really liked GDScript and the editor, because it was directly integrated into the development environment. And when comparing Godot to Unity, he said, quote, Unlike Unity, it's not a junkyard of half-functioning systems where you have four options for everything, two of which are deprecated and the other two are an alpha. 
but he also had some gripes with Godot. He didn't like how transform values were at the bottom of the editor and were hidden by default. The file chooser does not remember previous locations, and you also can't tell if a mesh or material is referenced from multiple places. You have to keep clicking make unique so that you don't accidentally edit a shared value. All in all, he says he will definitely use Godot again for future game jams and prototypes where a 3D engine is needed. Quote, being able to stay in Linux alone is worth it. The documentation is better, the examples are up to date, and there's an active community, so if you are really stuck, you can get help. For major projects though, he says he will have to do a deeper evaluation of Godot. There's some uncertainty of whether it's practical to export to consoles from Godot, since all that code is closed source. In the full article, he actually goes much more in depth about the pros and cons of the Godot engine. I will link the full article in the description. And now is the part of the show where we look at some cool projects made with the Godot engine. The Smooth Move plugin looks to help with jittering in Godot when VSync is off. The Material Icons plugin adds Templarian's Material Design icons to Godot. These icons can be used in the Material Icon and Material Button nodes. Godot Unit Testing, or GUT, is a tool for creating and running tests for your Godot projects. The Verlet Rope plugin allows you to build ropes in your Godot projects. Here you can see the ropes being used as power lines that even react to wind forces. Godot Lua plugin script adds support for Lua as a scripting language in Godot. Jim Godot allows Godot to be used as an open AI Jim environment for reinforcement learning. The demo for Polaris has been released. Polaris is a Metroidvania made by the YouTuber Master Albert. It was originally built in GameMaker, but eventually he moved the project to the Godot engine. In Fish Shards, you are a wizard fish with legs that can combine five elements to create unique spells. Battle strangers, friends, or hordes of evil fish shards by simply joining or hosting a room. For My Aspect is a first-person combat horror game. Awaken high atop a lodge in Fluorescent Mountain during an excursion to Alaska for an exciting new aspect. Luna is set in a dystopian, oligarch future where artificial intelligence regularly go rogue. Play as a corporate-sanctioned AI decommissioner tasked with reaching and rebooting AIs once the inevitable happens. Armed with your trusty MK1 laser, explore a sprawling station filled with many secrets on this job that is turning out to be unlike any other previous one. Grab and place pieces to make the most points in Magblocks. Play as robots playing indoor soccer in Inside Soccer. Face Pong is a remake of the 1974 Atari game Quadrapong. A strategic tower defense where you control powerful drones. Unlock new towers and use specific technologies to defend your base on. Thukothea. Block Puzzle is a simple, addictive, challenging, and fun-to-play puzzle game which has a Sudoku-like grid. It is similar to the Tetris game, but here, instead of blocks coming from the top, you have to drag blocks from the bottom and place it on the grid. Escape the factory and discover the secrets hidden within the challenging 2D action platformer in Factory Escape. Dash Pong is a fun 2021 take on a classic by being a high energy and chaotic arcade local multiplayer game. You create physics based paddles by dashing. Score goals by sending your paddles at full speed. Enjoy the game up to 4 players in local multiplayer or with the Steam Remote Play together. 
That's all for you this week. Like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm. Thanks for watching.